Hey guys, so today I am going to go through the ins and outs, the good and the bad, and pretty much everything you need to know about sunscreen and sunblock and keeping your skin safe during the summer hot months. Okay, so I've really been dying to do this video because not only do I review tons of sunscreens and sunblocks. I'm actually going to say sunblocks because there's a big difference between a sunscreen and a sunblock, which I'll get to in a minute. Um, so I do review a lot of products and I'm going to put a link underneath this video for one of my reviews. I do these pros and cons reviews where I take five products, skincare, beauty, whatever, and, um, and I look at the strengths and weaknesses of each product. So there is one that I've done on facial sunscreens that I think you're gonna find really, really useful. So I'll put the link for that underneath this video. But I wanted to jump in and really give you some very, very important information that you may not know and that honestly you need to know because um, skin, care rate, uh, skin cancer rates are definitely rising. I mean, we hear that, it is true. And it doesn't correlate with the fact that we're using more sunscreen. So what's the problem? Well, I'm going to tell you what the problem is right now. Please leave comments as usual throughout the video. Um, I love getting your comments. I know there'll be questions after this video, but try and stay with me to the end. I'll try not to make it too long because I want you to get all the pieces of very uh, sort of vital information, if you like. So number one, there's a big, big difference between a sunscreen and a sun block. So before you even go shopping for a sun care product, make that distinction in your mind and know the difference. So a sunscreen is typically um, a chemical-based product. It has chemicals in it, and these chemicals filter the rays, the UVA, UVB rays, they filter them out. But they are synthetic chemicals. There's a number of them. The one that you may have heard of, and certainly the one that I avoid, is oxybenzone. And I will put that below this video very clearly. So when you're reading ingredient labels, you can make sure you avoid that one. Or maybe I'll put the whole laundry list, actually, of the, uh, of the chemicals to avoid. Now, the reason why you want to avoid these chemicals is because they have been proven to disrupt the natural functioning of your hormones, your endocrine system. And obviously, that's something that we absolutely want to avoid with our skincare products and our personal care products. So that's a big, big problem. And number two, often these chemicals have been found to cause skin allergies and skin rashes and skin problems. Not good when it's something that you're slathering or spraying all over your skin. The other thing is that it's those products, those sun screens, if you like, with the chemicals in, that have been um, connected uh, and in many ways have had the finger pointed at them in the rise of uh, skin cancer rates. So with all this information that I've gathered about the sunscreens that use these chemical filters, many years ago I decided I'm not using those anymore. There's too many red flags, too many dangers, too many warning signals. I'm done with that. I'm going to go down the mineral route. route. So then that brings us to sunblock. Okay, so I want to be really clear. Sunscreen, we've just talked about, is generally going to be chemicals. Generally, those chemicals tend to have health issues associated with them, right? Now, a sunblock is generally a mineral sunblock. Two minerals are used in a sunblock. Zinc oxide and titanium oxide, both of which are naturally occurring minerals. They are safe. The one caveat that I will say here is that in terms of zinc oxide, particularly, you want to try and make sure that it is non-nano. This is another issue that's cropped up um, as a sort of warning sign. And I think in Europe there are much stronger, stricter regulations in terms of the nano size. That means the particle size becomes so tiny that there have been uh, possible 
health issues with these tiny, tiny particles either being absorbed by the skin or through the skin, which is very, very controversial whether or not that actually happens or more uh, likely to be inhaled. But the good news is that, you know, there are many different companies that when you go to the website or you ask them, they'll say, no, we use non-nano. So what does a mineral sun block do? It basically blocks the UVA, UVB rays completely. It blocks them out. It's like shutting a physical door on them or, or wearing clothing that's going to stop them getting through. And obviously in days of old um, and still some, I guess, uh, those uh, minerals come, uh, they come, they're very white. And so a lot of people think, oh no, there's no way that I want to wear that. I don't want to look like a, you know, a ghost or a clown with this thick pasty makeup. But fortunately for you, I've actually done a lot of the groundwork in terms of reviewing a lot of these products. And uh, there'll also be a link to um, an art a blog that I've very recently written that's got my favorite brands, because I'm not going to be able to show you very many brands in this video, because I just want to get to these very important points for you to know so that you can really make a good selection when you go to the drugstore or when you buy online. That's my mission for this video. All right, so we've been through it. That's the most basic thing. Do I get a sunscreen? And do I get a sunblock? Do I get one with chemicals? Do I get minerals? And I think most of us are agreed, certainly if you follow my channel, Gorgeously Green, you will probably want something that is as natural as possible. Also, if you follow Gorgeously Green, and if you haven't subscribed to my channel, please do, um, you will also want a product that is cruelty-free, you know, vegan, not tested on animals, and all of those good things, free of parabens, free of phthalates. So those, those are oh, the only products, really, that I'm interested in looking at, because you don't want to avoid the, the sun filter chemicals and then have a whole lot of other synthetic chemicals in there, because what's the point? All right, so next important fact, number two, which is so important, and I'm so glad I'm getting the opportunity to uh, clear this up right now, because I have done a couple of DIY sunscreen, sunblock uh, videos. I, I make a really, really good sunblock. And uh, there's been a lot of comments underneath that one saying, well, how do you know it's SPF 25? Because I say it's around some, uh, SPF 25. That's irresponsible that you're saying that. You don't know for sure. So let's clear this up once and for all. So the first thing is that SPFs can be very misleading on products. I'm going to say that one more time. They can be very misleading. And if you see SPF 50, 60, 70, smell a rat, because the reason why it's misleading is that there's really a kind of lid on how sun protective a, a cream can be, which is thought to hover around the 35 mark, 30, 35 mark. So it's now thought that these very high SPFs that are put on the front of containers, have I got one on here? No, I haven't. Um, are thought to just to be marketing because and, and it's actually really dangerous because for mums particularly if you think about it with small kids run into the drugstore think oh my gosh that says 70 it's got a picture of a baby on the front I'm gonna grab that because I want to keep my little baby really safe well little irresponsible of that marketing because it's really not not the case and I will also say that the SPF the sun protection factor that's what SPF means is, re is never actually an exact science. Meaning, there's not one regulatory board in the whole of the world that goes, okay, everybody send us your products and we determine the SPF, cut and dry, conclusive. It just doesn't happen. So every brand will test their product differently. Sometimes it'll be in-house, sometimes it will be sent to a lab of sorts. But again, it's not an exact science. It's what the company or the brand is determining their product to be based on testing, hopefully human testing and not animal testing. And so that's very important to know for you to, in a way, to be a little bit more empowered about your choice. So rather than just go reaching for that higher SPF, go, 
Mm. First off, I'm, I'm going to really check out the company's credential. I'm going to check that there's minerals, that there's no uh, chemicals in there that I shouldn't be using that could disrupt my hormones, etc., etc. Um, that's really, really the most important thing. And then look at the SPF. Now, this is the really, really, really important thing for you to know. Most people don't know this, so stay with me. Most people think that an SPF 15, okay, you look at 15 and you think, okay, well, that's kind of quite low. SPF 30, oh, that's much, much higher. I'm going to go for that. But here's the truth. SPF 30 is not double the sun protection factor of SPF 15. It doesn't work like that. The percentages don't like work like that. You're not getting double the protection. So SPF 15 is around 93%. You get is about 97%, ah, 93% um, effective um, in terms of uh, keeping, allowing you to stay in the sun 15 times longer than you would be able to normally if you had nothing on your skin. If it jumps up to SPF 30, it only adds, I think it's another three or four percent to that. So we sort of jump up to around about 97 percent. Interesting, right? And you go to 70 or 80 and you may think I'm edging towards 100%, but no, you're not. So I would hover if you are thinking I really, you know, kids and whatever, I want to be really, really, really safe. You know, you might want to just, you know, have a little bit more of a percentage. So you might want to go for 97 as opposed to 93. Hopefully that makes sense to you. Um, so in as much the take home of all of that is don't sweat, excuse the pun, about the SPF. Now, um, I'm going to give you, well, I'll give you an example when I show you. I just want to show you a couple of products. More important, stay with me guys, because I'm getting to the knuckle of probably what is the most important thing or the nub of it, is how you apply your sunscreen. So way more important than the SPF is how you apply your sunscreen and how often you apply your sunscreen. So this leads me on to a spray versus a cream or a lotion. So a spray, I would like you from now on to think of a spray as a topper, all right? So this spray is not, I would not use this as my primary sun block when I'm gonna be in the sun, on a beach, doing sports, somewhere where my skin's getting a lot of sun. This is not going to be your base sun product. It is simply a topper. Um, the reason is that a spray is very, very, very hard to make sure that you're really getting it all over your skin and getting it to stick and adhere to your skin in the way that a thick lotion will actually, you can see where it's going, you're rubbing it in, you can very clearly take each part of your body and go, okay, I've really, really covered this area, now this area, now this area, okay? So always use a lotion and a cream, and then you can pop one of these in your uh, bag as you go. The other thing with a spray is obviously, if you're spraying a spray on a beach or outside while you're hiking, 90% of the product is lost in the air. It's a waste of money. So when you're spraying, if you're on a beach, go into a bathroom or a tent or I don't know, anywhere where there is no um, air, wind blowing it away, because otherwise, total waste of time. All right, next thing that I wanted to get to, um, which is something that I uh, have got down now because it was so important to me, because as you can see, I have very, very fair skin. I'm of Scandinavian descent. My father's Danish, my mother's English. I have blue eyes, fair skin. And um, so I am a prime candidate, frankly, for, you know, skin cancer. And unfortunately, I've had a little bit too much sun in my life, but I'm really, really careful now. And I take care of my skin and I um, apply vitamin C every single day to my skin religiously. You've probably seen my DIY vitamin C um, serum videos. If you haven't, please go and look for them right now because they're really cost effective and very, very powerful. And everybody needs to use them. 
but I wanted to show you a couple of things here. So for my face, you may have seen these products. This is uh, called Brush on Sunscreen uh, by Color Science. And I think there's another brand called Sunbrella, I want to say. And it's SPF 50, it says, and it is uh, waterproof and uh, broad spectrum, blah, blah, blah. Um, it says it's anti-aging, mess-free, the whole nine yards. However, much like the spray, don't use this as your primary sunscreen. So here's the thing with my facial sunscreen. I put it on in the morning, most people do. So I've done my moisturizer, then I'm gonna put on my BB cream, which this is a BB cream and or uh, sunscreen. And then I'll put my makeup on on top of there. Okay, that's what most of us do. That's most of us, what most of us should do. Fully, all over your face, don't forget your ears, particularly if you put your hair back, your neck, your decollete, tops of your shoulders. Get it evenly on there. And then you'll put your makeup on. Your makeup might well, most makeups now have a little bit of an SPF. It might have a 15 in there, so you're kind of doubling up. Great. Then, unless you're on vacation in Hawaii or on a beach, a whole different deal, and you're probably not wearing makeup, and then you can just reapply every two hours and you need to do that even if you're wearing a hat but if you're just going around your regular everyday life like I do here in LA or in England it doesn't really matter you're getting rays wherever you are so don't be fooled about that even in the winter um, what I do is I take with me either a brush on stick because it's a topper that's how I regard it that's a topper that's a topper or a top up um, so let me just show you. This is good. It comes in three different shades. The medium is pretty good for most people. It comes through. You do that on your skin and then all over your face and you can easily wash the brush and no problem. Okay. However, you, if you can't really see this on the camera, but even doing that, a lot of it is getting lost in the air, much like the spray. I like it, but a lot of it's getting lost, even if there's no wind. So, there is a product that I really like, and this is by Jane Iredale, and she was almost like the first to do mineral, make all kinds of mineral makeup, and I love her mineral makeup because it is bismuth oxychloride free, and a lot of mineral makeups have that ingredient in them, which makes, you, um, it's very itching and drying on your skin. So you want to avoid that ingredient. You cannot go wrong with Jane Iredell. So Powder Me SPF, SPF 30, broad spectrum. But I want to show you how cool this little guy is. There's this little container here. It has a mirror in the top, which is lovely because you just pop it in your purse or have it in your glove compartment of your car. And I can go, okay, I can see, you know, what's going on here. And then it has a powder puff like a powder puff that would come in the top of a powder compact and what this is brand new so I haven't got it going yet but once you get it going you know you'll swirl it and everything and the sunscreen will come out of the top of that and you press it on to your face so actually I prefer this I think it's safer I think it's more exact I think you're gonna waste less with a product like this than a product like this not to say both of them have their merits but i'm going to go for this over this um i know i'm going to say this just i know people are going to ask because i picked it up uh this is by suntegrity and if you've read my reviews and followed me for a while you'll know i love suntegrity as a sun care line this is their five in one bb cream uh well, i'll put the link for it underneath the video and it is amazing it hydrates primes covers protects the whole nine yards it's spf 30 it's tinted and i think it comes in i want to say four different shades um and and this is the their golden i see i need glasses this is the golden light which is beautiful just gives me a very faint sun-kissed glow not too much coverage perfect for every day and actually really nice under makeup as well so for me if i'm not on set if i'm not doing tv or whatever i'll just wear that and then i'll take that with me throughout the day but if i'm on set or if i'm going out and i want to look prettier and i want to make myself up i'll do that makeup and then a couple of hours and pat the normal powder a couple of hours later to top up through the day i'll do that and then finally gosh i hope i'm not missing anything in this video oh because I had all these things that I wanted to tell you. I'm gonna take a sip of tea. By the way, if you have any questions, maybe that will provoke me to think of what I might have missed, any really important information. Oh, I know that one thing I'm gonna mention before I finish. This is another Jane Iredale product that I picked up because 
um, I think it's great. And, and actually, I love it because I've been looking for this product forever and didn't find it in another brand. It's a hand cream, a hand lotion that is SPF 15. So it is perfect for every day. It's called Hand Drink. And it smells absolutely lovely and it's full of nourishing anti-aging ingredients. Um, there we go, perfect. And that, in my purse, I'm absolutely set with, thank you Jane Iadell, with that and that in my purse. Um, I think that's it. I've covered sunblock, sunscreen, minerals, nanoparticles. You're gonna to want to know lots of brands that I like. Link to that article is underneath this video. And finally, I want to say, because again, going rolling back to that uh, SPF factor uh, with my DIY sunscreen, I hope that answers your question. Because as I said, there were comments of like, how do you know you're calling it SPF? Well, it's not totally. I don't absolutely know for sure. But what I do when I make my sunblock with zinc oxide is I can test it. I live in sunny Southern California. I have fair skin. So what I do is I make it. I have a pretty good idea from looking at a lot of different formulations what percentage of zinc oxide I have to put in to get an SPF. So I can guesstimate that. But then I wear it and I test it in my yard in a bikini or in Hawaii. And uh, I see that it, you know, it obviously completely protects me. And if it didn't for very long, I can sort of, you know, do my own testing. And, you know, if that's not a good enough science for you, then absolutely I understand that. And you can, you know, buy, buy something that's a little bit more, uh, you know, buy some huge brand that's probably gone to a big testing lab. But I do like to make my own because I love to save money and put in all those other really interesting ingredients. And I think it really works. So that's it. Um, Thank you for bearing with me through this rather long video. And, um, and, 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 oh, I guess the very, very last thing I'm gonna say is don't forget your lips, because a lot of us forget our lips, um, and we just put on lip gloss and lip uh, balm. And I know you're gonna ask me, I haven't got it to hand, but Suntegrity does. I think it's their newest product. They have a lip stick which has SPF in it, which is really, really nice. And I will put the link also to that underneath this video. All right, my friends, I love hanging out with you. I hope you've enjoyed this video. I hope you've got some good information from it. And, uh, and if you have some sun uh, blocks, some mineral sun blocks that are really, really safe and healthy, please share them underneath this video because I know everybody in my YouTube community will be really, really interested in your suggestions too. And I will see you next time. Bye guys.